Hi guys, in this lecture we will look into introduction of XAML in WPF. Now what is XAML? XAML is a programming language used to create user interfaces for Windows. So this means that if you are creating an application in WPF and also you need to create a Windows Store app, you need to learn about XAML or XAML. Now if you are familiar with ASP.NET Web Forms or ASP.NET MVC, it is the same concept in which we design UI in HTML and write our code behind in C Sharp. This is the same concept used in WPF and Windows Store apps that we can define our UI in a XML based format called as XAML and use C Sharp as our code behind. So XAML is a XML based markup language. Now the big question coming to your mind will be that uh, should you need to learn about XML for this language answer is not necessary you can learn xml without knowing about xml because all it follows is just the simple syntaxes of xml and each all controls attributes etc are defined according to dotnet namespaces so xml was first uh, introduced as a part of dotnet framework 3.5 so let's look into our slides first to understand what is xml or xaml so let's look into our first three points first and then we will understand the syntaxes of XAML using a example. So XAML which stands for Extensible Application Markup Language is a Microsoft's variant of XML for describing a UI. Now XAML code is declared using textual XML. We can use designers to create XAML code or write XAML code by hand. Now you can, there are many uh, tools, those are available in market to define xaml code for your ui and one of that very popular tool is expression blend or else you can also write xml code by hand now most of the wbf developers uh, write xml code by hand because they are not expertise in expression blend now expression blend is used by ui designers specifically who needs to create a very rich ui that is lot of colors lot of saturation lot of styles lot of bindings or say a lot of multimedia like 3D. So that those type of UIs are created with the help of expression blend specifically used by UI designers. A general C sharp developer uses XML code by hand or writes XML code by hand. So throughout this tutorial, I, uh, we will be using XML code written by ourselves. Now XML is not a part of .NET framework as C sharp BB.NET. So you need something to read XAML language or in other words, say suppose I am using VB.NET or C Sharp language. These all languages are converted into native language for the C Sharp compiler to understand. Now what if I write something in XAML and C Sharp compiler doesn't understand anything. That won't work. So in order to our compiler to understand XAML which is not a part of .NET framework, XAML is converted to BAML at runtime by MS build. Now what is MS build? MS build is a assembly which is present in .NET framework. So how XAML is interpreted? XAML is first converted into BAML and that BAML is the binary representation of XAML that we see in our UI. Now how all these conversion take place is beyond the scope of this tutorial. So it happens behind the scenes with compiler. So what you need to remember that XML stands for extensible application markup language and it's used for designing UIs and also UI, uh, UIs could be designed with the help of hand or some tools such as expression blend. C sharp developers mostly design UIs themselves. Also, XML is converted to a BML at runtime by MS build. That is a assembly which is present in .NET framework. Let's move to Visual Studio and see how this XML or XAML works. So here I have a WPF application created and this WPF application is an empty application till now. And you can see this is the designer and this is the XML which is used to define this designer. So now there are two ways of defining XML. One is to drag and drop the controls from our toolbox. 
so suppose i need to have a button in here i will drop it here and the corresponding xaml will be generated in here but since we are learning xaml for first time let's not use the designer that is drag and drop approach we we need to type it by ourselves let's try to write a button in here or first let's understand it one by one what what all these elements stand for so let's look into here what is this this is the window element that means i'm defining my window that is here or my application window with the help of this window uh, window tag now each and every control that is present in uh, that will be present in our application will be inside this window and we are defining this window as a class with the help of x dot class or x colon class so the moment we append x colon class this generates a class which correspond to this window let's see the code behind of this window and this is the code behind and you can see this class is generated this partial class is generated of type of name main window with the help of this x dot class the moment we remove this and try to run our application we get build errors that's because we have our class defined in here in the code behind but this code behind cannot find a class that is called main window so let's get our main window back and what is this these are our namespaces so all the wpf controls which take part in presentation that that means when uh, all the controls that take part in definition of ui present in this namespace same goes with the c sharp convention if you are using a uh, namespace of system dot collection dot generic you can use generic classes same goes in here so all these classes all the windows uh, wpf classes are present in this namespace and you can see all these namespaces are defined with the help of xml ns that is if you need to define a namespace you need to start this namespace with the help of xml ns attribute this is the local namespace which is defined in here so xml intro this is the name of our namespace that means when we created a project it creates a namespace and same is defined here as xml intro so these all xa xml ns are the various namespaces that are used in this application and this is the main window title which is uh, defined in here and inside this window we have grid layout what this layout does that all the controls which are defined in a wpf application should be inside a layout otherwise you won't be able to see those controls so basically these layout uh, arranges all the controls in a wpf window we will learn more about layouts in our separate tutorial because there are basically five or six different type of layouts and we need to learn how to use them so for this demo we are just using a grid layout and we, this is also a most common type of layout which is used in wpf applications so whatever the controls uh, we need to define we need to define it inside this grid layout so let's try to define a button so as you can see for each element you need a closing tag on same goes with this button so the moment you put this angular bracket this button is automatically closed with help of visual studio you can also close it by like this so you have defined a button and you have closed in it in line so now you can see i have my button defined in my wpf application now what this button has done i have not defined a height and width of this button so what it has done it has by default taken the size of this grid that's why you can see my window has become a button so by default if you do not specify the height and width of a element or a control it will take the height and width of the parent element that is button is taking the height width height and width of grid and grid is indeed taking the height and width of this window attribute so so let's define our height and width of this button here height let's say 100 or say okay 100 and then width should be say 150 okay so you can see this height and width are the properties of button class and they are defined as attributes of this button element so you can do the same thing in 
by going the properties windows of button and defining height and width here so if you need to change the width to 160 you can change in here and the moment you do this you can see the width of my button is changed in here so you can do it either way both in xaml or by the designer window or properties window and you can see there is no content inside this button so let me add a content with the help of content attribute i am a button and let me make this uh, content as bold so that you can easily see it you can see all these things are changed the moment i define in the xaml let me try to remove this height and width of this button so it takes the default size of this grid and let me define my height and width of this grid as same as that of button so you can see the grid has now become the size of button so my button is aligned perfectly so you might have understood that if you do not define a height and width of a element it will take by default the parent hi parents height and width so now let's inspect the code behind of this window and you can see in this code behind we have a partial class that is wpf is using the partial class concept of c sharp to split the definition in two different files that is one one file is defined in with designer and the other file is with this code behind class so what's the function of this code behind class is to make your wpf uh, application as functioning so you need to write some custom code for making this application to work and that's defined in the code behind class now this is the general terminology what i am explaining you in reality when you define wpf applications you need to follow a pattern called as mvvm pattern in which you don't write anything behind uh, in the code behind but you write each and every logic in the view model and the uh, views and for this demonstration i am just writing my all of the code in the code behind file and you can see in the constructor of this main window class we have a initialize component method now what's the function of this initialize component method it in turn calls the load component method of window class so let's go into definition of initialize component method and you can see it's calling the load component method and what does this load component method does is to convert xaml into bml which i have explained you earlier that means in the binary representation re representation of xaml language so that our compiler can understand what is a xml language so this initialize component method is defined to the constructor of main window that is our window so that it always runs when this window is when our application runs and this in turn calls the load component which converts our xml into bml so what we have learned till now we have a window class which contains a grid and which contains a button and we can generate the class with the help of x x colon class attribute and all the namespaces are defined with the help of xmlns attribute okay we need to define the height and width of a element uh, otherwise the uh, it will take by default the height and width of its parent container the code behind of our window is responsible for our application to run and this is done with the help of initialize component method also in xaml there is a uh, there is a good concept of uh, markup extension and often it's asked in interviews that what do you mean by markup extension so when we learn about styles resources etc et you will use a lot of markup extension say suppose you need to bind something with uh, with style so you can instead of binding it directly you can bind it with the help of a markup extension so you can do like this see binding dynamic resource static resource theme dictionary etc so whatever is defined inside these curly braces as uh, markup extension these values will be evolved uh, evaluated at the runtime or simply instead of hard coding you can uh, specify the values inside a markup extension and markup extensions are identified with the help of these curly braces and all markup extension does is to provide a dynamic look and feel of this control 
so let me revert to back to IMA button now I have listed all the points in the slide so let's move back to our slides and you can see every element in a XML document maps to an instance of a .NET class the name of the element matches the name of class exactly and that we have seen in here so this maps to my XML in, uh, underscore intro class the XMLNS attribute is, is a specialized attribute in the world of XML that reserved for declaring namespaces and that we have seen already. The properties of classes defined in XML are specified as attributes and that we have seen the height and width properties of button are specified as attributes of this button element. The code behind class is generated using partial class concept of C This code behind class is responsible for functioning of WPF application. This we have seen already and same goes with the last second point that initialized component method is responsible for generation of bml with the help of load component method now uh, you can see in the last point that uh, to resolve certain values using styles binding etc markup extensions are used and they are identified with curly braces so these all things are very important in if you need to understand what is xaml and to start developing wpf applications so i hope you understood and enjoyed this video if you have any doubt please leave a comment i will be there to help you thank you so very much